Okay, so my brother came to me with a problem. He wanted to know when his Home Assistant instance was down, but he couldn't use his Home Assistant instance because it would be down. So we're going to use webhooks. So if you're interested in knowing more about Home Assistant webhooks, stick around because we're about to automate some boring stuff. What's up everyone, my name is Jeff, and if this is your first time here, at Slacker Labs, we look for ways to automate the boring stuff using smart home tech. When my brother came to me looking for a solution on how to monitor his Home Assistant instance, my first thought was to get him set up with a Cloudflare SSL cert. Because if his instance is down, Cloudflare would send him an email letting him know. Or as my friend Geo over at Smart Home Makers suggested, we could use a ping test, which would reliably detect if his instance was down. But my brother wondered about using my Home Assistant instance to monitor his Home Assistant instance. And of course, the problem is the two instances are not connected in any kind of way, but we could use a webhook to create that connection. Because with a webhook, you could get information from any service that lives outside of Home Assistant into Home Assistant. For example, if you still use if this then that, then you could use a webhook to trigger any Home Assistant automation using any service trigger that exists in if this then that. And of course, you could get really complicated and have the webhook pass data to your Home Assistant instance as well. Services like OwnTracks use webhooks in this way. In this use case though, we're just going to keep things simple and have the webhook trigger an automation inside my Home Assistant instance. So while we're going to talk through a use case on how we could use Home Assistant to monitor another instance of Home Assistant, the true purpose of this video is a webhook primer. So let's take a moment to talk about what exactly a webhook is. A webhook is just a dedicated URL that's hosted on your Home Assistant instance. And you can use that webhook to trigger automations or pass data to sensors inside your Home Assistant instance. And setting up a webhook is really easy. And it all starts with building an automation. To demo this, I created a simple automation. Here, we're going to set the trigger to the platform webhook. Then we're going to use the webhook ID send underscore a underscore message. The ID here can be whatever you want, but this ID will be used in the URL. So I suggest writing it without spaces to avoid having to deal with ASCII codes. Then for action, I'll just send a notification to my phone. And when we save this automation, we'll have a new webhook. The URL will be your instance DNS name, slash API, slash webhook, slash the webhook ID we just created. So in the case of this demo, the address of my local Home Assistant instance, slash API, slash webhook, slash send a message. Now, there are three important things to note here. First, webhooks don't have any authentication around them. Meaning, if anyone knows your webhook ID and the public address to your Home Assistant instance, they can trigger your webhook. So to help combat that, you may want to use a randomized string as your webhook ID. You'll just want to keep track of what strings you're using for which webhooks so that you don't get confused and trigger the wrong webhook. Second, if you don't want to expose your Home Assistant instance to the internet, or for whatever reason you can't expose it to the internet, you could leverage Nabucasa to host your webhook. To do that, once you've saved your automation, head over to the Nabucasa Cloud section under Configuration and scroll down. Here, you'll find a list of all the webhooks you've created. If you flip this little toggle, you'll get a Nabucasa URL with a randomized webhook ID that you can use from anywhere. If you're a Nabucasa subscriber, I suggest using this option if you're going to be using this webhook in services outside your network. When you're done, you can simply disable it, and no one has to know the secret DNS name of your Home Assistant instance. And third, to use a webhook, you have to use the post HTTP method, which means you can't simply drop this URL in a browser like I did here and hit enter. If you do, you're going to get a 405 error. So to test this, you'll need a way to generate a post request. And for that, I'm going to use curl in my terminal. So if I execute curl with my new webhook, I get a notification on my phone like that. So now that we know how to create a webhook, let's talk through our use case to show how we're going to make use of it. The idea was to have my brother's home assistant send a heartbeat to my home assistant on a set interval. Then my home assistant can monitor for when that heartbeat stops and then send a notification. While you could do this yourself with another instance of home assistant on the same network, I think to be really reliable, you're going to need to be able to call this webhook from outside your network. 
But for those of you using if this and that, you could simply leverage that service to trigger your webhook ID as well. And while the remote monitoring use case may not be something you're interested in, I hope you still stick around because as we build this solution, we're going to be covering on how to trigger automations using things like when Home Assistant starts or even time patterns, and we're going to discuss how to do timestamp math, which can be extremely useful in other situations. If you're interested in a written guide of this walkthrough, you can find it over on my blog. And since we're going to be having to leverage some YAML and some templates, you'll be able to copy and paste any of the YAML that you see in this guide. There's a link to the blog post in the description of this video. The first part of this build is going to be on our system that will be doing the monitoring. That is our Home Assistant instance that will be listening for the heartbeat. And we're going to need a couple of helpers. So for that, we're going to head to configuration and then helpers. The first one we're going to add is our date time helper. This will store the current date and time each time our remote system hits our webhook. I called this one remote system heartbeat. Next, we need a drop down. This one will store the status of our heartbeat and we'll call it remote system status. And we'll give it two options, alive and unknown. You could use whatever you wanted here. Just have one to denote when everything is good and one for when it's not. Next, we'll need our automation. You could split this automation into three, but because Home Assistant gives us the ability to combine them into one, that's what I did. I named this one Remote System Heartbeat, and I have two triggers. The first, I picked the webhook platform, and I gave it the ID of Remote underscore System underscore Heartbeat. The webhook ID here can be whatever you want to make it. Although again, I would avoid using spaces in the name just to make things easier on whatever will be hitting this URL. Then for trigger ID, I called it Heartbeat. This will be the trigger that happens as a result of our webhook being hit. The second trigger is a time pattern, and for the trigger ID I called it update. For minutes, I used slash 30. The slash here is important. Slash 30 means that it will trigger every 30 minutes. If you leave the slash off, it will trigger only when the minutes equal 30, which, as you might know, will only be once an hour. Then for action, we'll use our friendly neighborhood choose action. The first option will be trigger ID equals heartbeat. Under action, we'll call the input datetime set service. We will choose the input datetime helper remote system heartbeat that we created earlier. And then we're going to pick datetime for the option we need to set here. For the value, we're going to use a template though. So as soon as we try to do this in the UI, it's going to kick us into the YAML editor. But what this template will do is get the current date and time anytime this automation is triggered by our heartbeat, which will hopefully be each time our remote system hits our webhook. This template takes the current time and changes the format to one our helper will understand. Timestamp formatting can get tricky, especially if you're not used to using this syntax. You may be able to pick up on what these mean based on context, but since we're here, I'm going to define them. Percent capital Y is the year as a four digit number. Hyphen in this case is just hyphen. Percent lowercase m is the month as a two digit number. Percent lowercase d is day as a two digit number. Percent capital H is the two digit hour using 24 hour time. Percent capital M is the two digit minute. And percent capital S is two digit seconds. Okay, back to the automation. The next action in this option is to call the input select select option service and give it the entity ID of our drop down helper. And we'll tell it that the option we want to pick is alive. So if our heartbeat triggers this automation, we're going to grab the current time and stored in our heartbeat date time helper. Then we're going to set the status drop down to alive so that we know the system just reported in. The next choose option will be what happens if this automation gets triggered by the every 30 minute time pattern. But we also want to check to see if the heartbeat has happened in the last hour. So we're going to use a little bit of Jinja to do some timestamp math. First, we'll get the current time and we'll use the as timestamp function to convert it to Unix time. Then we'll subtract the current value of our heartbeat date time helper. We'll need to use the as timestamp function here as well so that the two numbers we're subtracting are the same format. Then lastly, we'll check to see if the difference between the two timestamps is less than 3600 seconds, which is 60 minutes or one hour. If these two conditions are met, then we want to make sure that we set the remote system status drop down helper to alive since we just heard from our remote system in the last hour. And then we'll leverage the default option for the choose action. The default section here contains all of the things that happen if none of our other choices are taken. So in the case of this automation, this should be any time this automation is triggered by the time pattern. But the last time we heard from our remote system was more than an hour ago. 
In that case, we want to call the input select select option service and select unknown. Then, since this means our system is down, we can send a notification that our system is, of course, down. In this case, I'm just sending that notification to my mobile app. But you could easily drop in your notification service of choice here. So a better way may be to abstract the notification pieces of this automation into its own automation that can trigger just when the status of our status helper switches from unknown to alive or alive to unknown. I'll include an example of that automation in the written guide over on the blog. Again, the link is in the description. Next, you'll want to add your changes to the system that you want to monitor. On this system, you'll need to create a REST command, and this is one of those things you can't do via the UI. So grab your favorite text configuration editor and open your configuration.yaml file. Here, you'll want to add this little section, if you don't already have a REST command section defined, that is. Give your REST command a name like remote system heartbeat. Then URL will be your webhook URL and method will need to be post. REST commands are useful for more use cases than this, and I hope to talk more about them in a future video. But for now, we'll leave it at that. Just be sure you restart Home Assistant after you've modified your configuration.yaml file and saved it. Next, we need to automate the execution of that REST command. For that, we'll head over to our automation option under configuration. I just named this automation send heartbeat, and I gave it two triggers. First, a time pattern, again, firing every 30 minutes. And the second trigger will be one that triggers every time Home Assistant starts up. Then for action, we just need to call our REST command that we created. And that's it. Now every 30 minutes or when Home Assistant starts up, this Home Assistant system should reach out and touch our webhook, triggering some automation on the other instance. Okay, that's a lot of work for a simple demo of webhooks. But hopefully it gave you a better idea of how you could use a simple webhook to trigger automations on your system. That's all I have for this video. So if you found this video useful, hit that like button and consider subscribing to my channel for more smart home content like this. Also, my friend Tab said I should remind everyone to leave a comment. So let me know in the comments if there was anything I touched on that you wanna see in more detail, you know, for Tab. And as always, thanks for taking time out of your home automation projects to watch mine. Until next time, go automate the boring stuff.